Hey everyone. Uh, this morning I was having a conversation with a friend about something that we've got planned for the new year, which is going to be really exciting. It's all around this concept of should I stay or should I go? So should I stay in my current role? Uh, what does the impact look like if I stay? Should I leave my role for maybe another role? Uh, or in Jeremy's case, he actually helps people transition out of the C-suite and into a life after the C-suite. So for him, it's about, well, do I stay in a corporate role or um, or do I move and do something completely different? And so we've been having some awesome chats, but he got me thinking about somebody else that I worked with a number of years ago now. And um, I remember it was, oh, I reckon Ed and I probably hadn't worked together for about six months at the point that we met up for coffee in this little cafe in Melbourne. And he said to me, I'm done. Like, he's like, it's just so frustrating. And Ed and I had been involved in a, a transformation around agile ways of working. So we're working in an IT group. Um, their role was to build... Uh, software for call centers and Ed and I were sitting there and I'd left the project probably about six months earlier Ed had stayed on and um, and he was saying to me he's just, the, just expressing this frustration he's like we'd got so close um, you know we'd really changed a whole bunch of like the, the ways that we do and we, I really felt like we were going new places and it just got to a point where it was start, it felt to him like it was starting to unravel you know, he'd say things like, I see us slipping back into the old ways of working. Um, we don't have, you know, insert visionary leader here who's leading this thing that, that Ed had thought, you know, he's saying this is really important. We're missing that. And just, I think, it, you know, expressing some of that fatigue that happens when you're in change programs. Uh, and and really, for me, it was it was realizing quite how much of a personality cult some of these change programs can be that idea that you know if you lose somebody who's really key to the whole piece then uh, everything unravels very quickly and I've certainly witnessed that in more than one occasion you know I've, I've witnessed four years of work undone in the space of three months because you get the wrong person in the wrong position and then it's like stretching the rubber band too far and it snaps back and the whole of the weight of the organization and the old ways of working kind of smacks you in the face. And as a change agent, that's very frustrating. So Ed and I were sitting there having coffee and he was he was expressing this frustration to me. And, and you know, he was thinking about leaving and uh, this, this idea of should I stay, should I go comes up over and over again. And what I learned in that conversation with Ed as we talked through it, he, you know, he was really wrestling with, do I stay and do I keep pushing because I know that we can be better and I can still see a pathway whilst others around me maybe can't see that pathway. Um, you know, there was, there was this element of duty of care for your team, um, duty to, to make that change because you can see what it needs to be. Uh, even if maybe some of the other people around you don't, or it's, you know, the thing's sort of falling apart a little, you know, I could feel that burden of this sense of duty around making that change happen. Uh, and then, you know, we, we also sort of talked about, well, what happens if he'd left this particular role? Um, where to next? And there was this moment, and I've seen this with other people as well, where, once you've been involved with one of these big change programs and you've sort of, you've seen the light and, you know, often there's, there is frustration and pain and an annoyance that goes along with this view of, I can see something better and I want it and I'm going after it. Uh, but what was really interesting was sitting there with Ed and this kind of look came over his face and he thought you could see him processing and he said, you know, I know that if I leave this role and I go to another role, it's like, it's going to be the same thing. And as we talked, we realized that if he was to transition, he was going to get six, probably a six-month window, right? Get into a new job, six months where you're kind of getting your feet under the table, you're figuring out the lay of the land, you know, you've, you've got that honeymoon window. And, uh, and, and it had come to this realization that once that honeymoon window was over, he was going to find himself in that same place of, but I know there's a better way. 
and now I want that better way for my team. And he'd be right back where he was now around pushing change, making it happen. And and so the way up, it, it, all of a sudden the, that conversation shifted from weighing up, do I continue with pushing change and, and all the pain and the frustration that goes with that to do I continue to push for change in this organization, knowing all of the context around appetite for change, um, you know, where people's heads are at, the, you know, I, I have a clear sense of the work that is before me because I understand that context versus do I go and push change in another organization where there might be this window where I sort of get a bit of a break uh, but ultimately what I'm going to be doing is um, getting straight back into building the context around that organization, understanding the appetite that that organization has for change, and then find myself in the same position of change maker. And there was, there was this acceptance that, that that was now our role, <laughs> was that no matter where we went, we were going to have to be change makers because we couldn't unsee what we'd seen. We couldn't unlearn what we'd learned. We'd seen a better way. Um, that was clearly the way that both of us wanted to work, both me and in my new role, but also uh, Ed in his current role. And and it was there was this little moment of realizing that once you're in this space, once you are that change maker, once you're that corporate hippie Trojan horse, you can't let that go. You can't unlearn that. You can't unsee that. And it's this little thing that kind of once the seeds planted then it will nag at you and it will grow and, and and you can't just put that away in a box and ignore it and pretend like it's not going to be there. Uh, so I was reflecting on this and as I was talking to my f- colleague and friend Jeremy this morning about this whole idea of, well, should I stay, should I go? And I thought there's probably so many wonderful stories of people in similar positions, you know, working through that decision, whether it be Uh, Should I stay or should I go in my current role? Should I move to another role? Should I move out of corporate altogether? I just feel there's so many of these stories around that transition. And they're big life transitions and they're very personal transitions. Uh, You can't discount the the personal and the emotional and the the mindset stuff that's going on um, through all of that. And I just think it would be a really fun topic to explore. So Jeremy and I are beavering away on something in the background. Uh, but my question for you today is, if when you are in that position, because we, we all encounter that position at some point, when you're in that place of, should I stay, should I go, what are, the, what are the types of things that are running through your head? What are the considerations that are on the plate for you? You know, is it family? Is it finances? Is it um, purpose in your work? What are those things that you're, you're trying to wrestle with and work through and particularly if you've been through this transition a number of times, you've you've almost certainly made different decisions at different points based on different things. But I'm really curious about the types of stuff that you're considering when you're making that transition. For me, it's often been about what's my ability to continue to be effective in the current role. Uh, and then uh, an, another aspect to it is what's the ability to level up my impact and take a message to a broader group of people or a wider organization like how do I grow that sphere of influence is kind of the second part to the conversation for me and then I think the third part is really around um, family lifestyle like that health and well-being balance making sure that you're making decisions that are going to continue to allow you to look after yourself <laughs> rather than necessarily just up leveling for the sake of it and walking into a, a 60 hour a week uh, knowingly. Now I've also done that so probably a little bit of a little hypocritical but I guess those are, those are kind of the three things that I think about is like my ability to continue to be effective, uh, my ability to grow my sphere of influence and my ability to uh, make sure that I am still able to hold on to the things that are important. And I think across those three aspects, it's usually some kind of combination of those things that help me to get to a decision about transition. So really curious what those uh, what those things might be for you. What are those considerations that go into, into transition um, when you're thinking about, should I stay, should I go? What are you thinking about? 
So hit me up, send me a message. I'd be super keen to hear from you. Uh, it's also a little bit selfish of me to ask this of you because basically I'm going to try and pinch some of your ideas and maybe weave it into some of the work that we're doing with Jeremy and just make sure that um, we've got a, a little little present for you in the new year that's actually going to speak to some of those uh, challenges and those opportunities that you're having. So I hope wherever you are in the world today, you are having an awesome, awesome day. That's it from me. Uh, please hit me up with a comment. Let me know when you're thinking about transition, when you're thinking about should I stay, should I go, what does that look like for you? And uh, we'll see you next week. Have a great day.